Hello and welcome to FIP's Transforming Conversations, the podcast series that brings together pharmacists from around the world to have in-depth conversations and share stories on topics related to leadership and personal growth, the highs and lows in their professional lives and their unique experiences and lessons learned facing multiple challenges. Please let us know what you think and tell other people about FIP on social media. This is FIP's Transforming Conversations, and I am Dahlia Burgess, your host. Welcome to this episode in the FIP Transforming Conversations podcast series. Today, we are recording our first podcast in this series, and our guest is Dara Connolly, a community pharmacist in Ireland. Welcome to the call, Dara. Dali, it's my pleasure to join you on the call. Thank you for asking me. It's great having you, Dara. Dara, I'm going to start by saying you often identify yourself as third generation community pharmacist. Who is Dara the pharmacist? So Dara Connolly is my name and I'm a community pharmacist in a small coastal town on the southeast of Ireland called Dungarvan. And I am a third generation pharmacist, and I'm very proud of the fact my grandmother, Mary Connolly, qualified as a pharmacist in 1925, and that's nearly 100 years ago. And there weren't very many women professionals and at the time. And pharmacy actually was one of the career paths that many women chose because it was open to them and excelled at it. So she ran and owned her own practice, uh, which was, you know, a thing that not many women had the opportunity to do. And she was very good at it. My father grew up with his brother uh, and other siblings, and he and his brother chose a career in pharmacy and really enjoyed it because they saw how their parents uh, and family enjoyed practicing as pharmacists. And when I was growing up, that's what I saw too. And I am now 25 years qualified and I still really enjoy being a community pharmacy and running my own practice in my own community. Thank you for sharing the family legacy in the profession, Dara. Dara, pharmacists around the world kept their doors open and lights on during the COVID-19 pandemic. I have heard you once say, we were our community's point of access and trust for their healthcare advice and needs. So how has the COVID experience and being on the front line affect your pharmacist experience, practice, and perhaps even your personal outlook? Yeah, that's a really good question, Dahlia. Uh, we have as community pharmacists and as you know, team leaders had to give the whole, uh, we now perhaps, hopefully as we come to the end of COVID, we now have an opportunity to get some learnings from our practice and the ability to serve the communities that we work in and live in. And certainly a realization for me was in a way, I knew as a community pharmacist, uh, how much good we do within healthcare, the choice, the accessibility that we give to people, also the reciprocal trust that's there and the loyalty that's there from the communities that we serve. But because of the pandemic and the emergency that it was, it brought into focus how key community pharmacies are in the network of healthcare, in our physical structure, our physical accessibility, our ability to hold stock, our ability to manage stock, our ability to get the right medicine to the right person at the right time, even in the, the in the teeth of a pandemic like that. So I knew that, but everything became very distilled and very focused in our ability to do that. And it was a very stressful time because every it, it, it seemed to me that everybody else just pulled down the shutters or hid under the bed. But we had our doors open and our lights on. And I am really, really proud of my team. I'm proud of what we were able to achieve. I am delighted that we were able to vaccinate as well. And I wish more pharmacists and their teams around the world would have had that opportunity as well. So it was a stressful time, but it was a highly rewarding time as well. So I think the learning that we have from it is that 
we are really good at what we do. And perhaps one of the issues around advocacy for getting people better access to community pharmacy services is that perhaps we don't blow our own trumpets enough to say that, look, we do a really good job as it is. And I think if there is going to be positivity coming from our learnings from the pandemic, it's to say, not only do we know it and think it, we can now actually prove it, what a good job we did. You talk about learnings, um, Dara, for you as a pharmacist and for your teams, and we are also proud of you and your teams um, being on the front line, uh, uh, serving the communities. But I'm really curious to also find out what did you learn about yourself during the crisis? Yeah, I, I, I did. And, you know, I joke with my team, even though we're at this 25 years, that every day is a school day. So during the pandemic, uh, it was like every hour was a school day because we could because we were learning so much. I think that what I learned the most was, in a way, was kind of something that was in there anyway. But it, again, like that, it was probably distilled that we're all team players. And I think I can only be at my best if I'm part of a team. And I know that probably structures that we put in place and the dynamic of the team that we had here probably came to the fore that we actually excelled because we had that cohesion and that vision of who we are and what we do as a team. And that that wasn't so much that it was led, but there was a consensus here within our small community pharmacy as to who we are, what we want to do and how we want to do it. And because we had that purpose and we had that vision, and we knew that even though it was really hard, that we were doing good and people were so appreciative of what we were doing. So the learning was for us that we had a clear idea of who we were, what we wanted to achieve and how we might go about achieving it. We couldn't always predict what was going to happen the next day, but we felt that we had fundamental structures in place through our own ability as a team and our own ability to have that vision that helped us to get through it. That's really inspiring, Dara. And I'm going to go back to the patients. And I am wondering, and our listeners might be also curious to know, if you can tell us about a patient, whether during the pandemic or before the pandemic, that touched your heart and tell us about the patient that might have changed your practice. Yeah, that's that's a yeah, that's a really good question. I suppose with uh, with twenty five years plus under my belt, there's been a lot of people and there's been a lot of patients. Uh, I think I'd probably go as far as to say, Dahlia, that they all do. That you know, and it's it's people. And I think probably what I've learned as well is what's interesting is in a way even the nomenclature we use around describing the people that we help. And I would think to myself, a lot of people who come into my pharmacy, if I was to say to them, do you consider that you're a patient of mine? They wouldn't, well, I'm not sick. But, you know, they consider a patient somebody who's in a trolley in a hospital. So there are lots and lots of instances where I have had people who've touched my heart, who've changed my practice. I am in a very privileged position to be able to say that so many of those people have come back to me after the event and thanked me. Uh, for the help that we have given and the understanding that we have shown them. I think the one that always touches you the most is when, as part of somebody's healthcare journey or their life journey, is, is when their life ends and their family come to you and thank you and your team for your understanding in what is a very complex time for a family and a very sensitive time for a family our ability to smooth, the, particularly the transition of care between primary and secondary care, particularly getting people home so that they can die in their own homes, that would be a very specific instance where you would have people touching your hearts and your ability to do good. And certainly the, 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 the thanks is very much appreciated when it comes back. And in a way, I suppose, Dahlia, it kind of feeds back into the thought of what is our purpose? What is our mission? What is our vision? And we, we, we have a very clear sense of who we are and what we want to do. 
And it's not something that happens overnight either. I don't know that I came out of a university or came out of my internship knowing exactly that. But I think I, I have learned it uh, and I'm still learning it because the purpose and the mission can change ever so slightly. Thank you, Dara. That's really inspiring. And talking about vision, mission, goals and purpose, I have to let our listeners know that you are a valued member of the International Pharmaceutical Federation Community Pharmacy Section, the organization that represents millions of pharmacists around the world. So what is one thing that your involvement with FIP did for your practice or patient care that perhaps you didn't expect? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... That's that's that that's it. Yeah, that's a tricky question because there's lots. That's a good start. Uh, the first, the, the, I I suppose to to contextualize it, right? So like you know, people would be scratching their head saying, you, you know, have you not got enough to do in running a community pharmacy and having a life outside pharmacy that you would get involved in FIP? But I get huge energy, and uh, I'm a very naturally a very curious person. And I get huge energy from meeting fascinating people like you and so many other people in community pharmacy, in pharmacy, you know, be it nationally here in Ireland through my involvement in the Irish Pharmacy Union or meeting just brilliant people within FIP. And I love the collegiality that I get from that. And I get great energy from it because I love having conversations like this, as you can probably tell, talking about community pharmacy, how good it is and how we can work together to improve it using collegiality is the word isn't it it's a college it's people working together uh not for material gain but just for you know what i mean just to make things better and to understand how to make things better so what i think a real game changer for me was having a fascinating conversation with Catherine duggan the ceo of fip and she was back from a conference with the world health organization and often we can have a perspective about how community pharmacy is perceived through the lens of community pharmacists and our teams or our representative organizations. And what I found was fascinating was, was when Catherine, very, you know, professionally, collegiality, again, asked the question within WHO, you know, we've had this relationship with WHO and FIP since 1948. What more can we do for you or what does it look like to you? And it came back to say that we are so accessible and our unique point of difference nearly could be the fact that we're not seen or perceived as being a healthcare setting, that we have open doors, we have lights on, and we have fantastic teams beyond the pharmacists, the qualified people, working within our pharmacies and we're a huge resource. And then when I started to have a look at the development goals and I would you know, suggest to anybody listening to, the, to this podcast to have a look at the development goals and see how many of those we're actually achieving on a day-by-day -day basis within our practice as community pharmacists and even people listening who aren't community pharmacists is to say how many of those goals are achieved through, through, through your work they are ambitions but they're actually being achieved so that was a real eye-opener for me to be able to say yeah we need to start looking at community pharmacy from other perspectives not just the perspective of the community pharmacist and the people we serve on a day-to-day -day basis so dara can you tell us a little bit more about the community pharmacist of fip uh, and their vision um, as you touched on earlier and how this kind of also really resonates with you uh, and your vision for a uh, practice uh, uh, transformation in, in the community. Yeah, uh, again, getting to work with some really fascinating pharmacists from around the world was inspiring. We wanted to put together a vision 2025 in the community pharmacy section. So we did have a purpose. So we had a goal. So we wanted to identify essentially what were enablers to pharmacists being the best healthcare professionals that they can be. And very quickly, we were able to identify what the core competencies of a community pharmacist are. 
and they are to be able to dispense, to prescribe, to review and to administer, which is very simple. But what we know is, is that not every community pharmacist can do all of those four things with autonomous practice around the world. So our ambition is to allow community pharmacists to advocate not essentially for community pharmacists, and this is a subtle difference, but I think it's important. What I want to see is pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists around the world advocating for people to have better access to better services through their community pharmacy. And the subtle difference there is, I think it's nearly expected that pharmacists will advocate for pharmacists. That's, that's, that's a given, that's an understood. But I think what has a lot more resonance when you actually go to people who are in government or you know lawmakers, enablers, is to say to them that you're actually advocating for people and that our ability to look after those people, as we have proved through COVID, can be enhanced. And again, going back then to the development goals, what's a fundamental right that I think that everybody should have is they should have choice and access to timely and appropriate health care. And I really, it disappoints me so much when healthcare policy seems to be centered around the practitioner rather than the person who needs the health care. And that would be the core of the vision, would be to enable any pharmacist practicing in any of the four corners of the globe to open up that vision and to be able to identify themselves and see themselves currently as they practice and their own ambition to be able to practice, to do, be able to do more for the communities that they serve. And we were able to put that vision together and to distill it because there was a fantastic group of people there and just those the, the conversations were amazing and I got huge energy from them, as, as, as did everybody. And again, just like that, please dig it out. It's very easy to find on the FIP website and, and, and have a read of it. We definitely encourage our listeners to visit our website at FIP.org to find out more about the community farmers section vision. And I'm wondering, Dara, whether you wanted to share with our listeners about any perhaps future plans um, that are stemming out of the community farmers section that are worth uh, mentioning today? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. We don't rest on our laurels in FIP or in the community pharmacy section, or uh, pharmacists don't. We're, you know, looking for new challenges and how do we bring things forward. So, Dahlia, we spoke earlier about our ability to be just the really, really good pharmacists and team leaders during the pandemic, and that a lot of what happened in practice for everybody during the pandemic was everything was distilled and everything was quite pressurized because we were working in an environment where we were afraid, genuinely afraid that we could bring home a virus to our own families and maybe infect some of our own families or become infected ourselves because we were serving people and helping people get through the pandemic. And what a lot of that did was it brought a strain and it brought stress inevitably. It, it, it's only human that it would. But certainly I know that through the collegiality that I had with my network of pharmacists here in Ireland, but also my network of pharmacists in FIP, that by having conversations about the stress, having conversations about the decisions we had to make or how we were feeling about ourselves and our ability to lead and our ability to be the healthcare professionals that we wanted to be, I found that gave me great comfort and solace and it also gave me uh, great energy to be able to say I, I can actually do this and I can keep going. Now there were certainly days for me when I needed to have those conversations and I needed to have those reflections because it was very stressful and I know that it was stressful by talking to other pharmacists as well. So what we would like to do is to talk more within the community pharmacy section to broaden out a conversation within FIP and amongst all of us to say, what did we learn? What do we know about ourselves and our leadership? When we talk about leadership 
are we allowing ourselves the space to reflect about our own skills, our own mental health, our own vision, our own purpose, to be able to work under those conditions and work with that uh, distress that was there. And I would like to think as well, Dahlia, that we take a moment to also enjoy the triumphs, to enjoy the good things that happened and to prepare ourselves for when those situations will inevitably happen again, that our own practice, that we can enjoy it. And I enjoy being a community pharmacist. I, I enjoy working with other pharmacists and scientists in FIP. But I do so in the knowledge that there's days when I'm better at it than there's, there's days that are not. And what makes me have more good days, a lot more good days than bad days, is my ability to have those conversations and understandings around personal leadership, I think. So what we want to do, because that's the feedback we got from the community pharmacy section when we went out and asked members what they'd like, there's a real appetite out there to have conversations around leadership, well-being. And again, it's a word we can use is our purpose or our mission to be able to say, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. This is my place in the team. And this is what a really good day of me being a really good pharmacist looks like. So that's what we want to do. So we're going to have a series of town halls around the world where we can just start to have those conversations. And what I want to do is uh, I, I really want to listen because I know there's so many fantastic pharmacists and so many fantastic stories, maybe a little bit like we're having now. And I really want to get that feedback. And what I would love to see, Dahlia, is that we would then be able to bring forward from our vision and the core competencies of a community pharmacy, probably to look at what core work needs are for community pharmacists. What are the enablers and what are the barriers to us being the best professionals that we can be, that we get the best results from the resources that we have but also what I really, really want is I want to have a really satisfied and happy workforce of people who go to work. They work at the peak of their ability in really well uh, functioning teams, delivering really, really good healthcare. And when they go home in the evening, they say, yeah, that was a really good day's work and I enjoyed it. There's, you know, there's days that are harder than others. There are days that are more stressful than others. But that's the next vision that I would like. And I think that hopefully will start by having those conversations around the globe to be able to listen to community pharmacists, to listen to their experience as leaders and as practitioners, to get that picture, to be able to say, this is what it looks like to have a really good day at work. Dara, I certainly um, enjoyed listening to um, your summary of the vision of the community farmer section, as well as yours and your ambitions um, to really materialize the vision. And I, we want to wish you the best of luck. We hope that this particular conversation has provided a, an initial uh, platform to disseminate this, this work. And we look forward to hearing more about it um, as implementation of this particular um, project takes place. I have really been inspired and we are kind of going towards the end of uh, uh, the episode, heading towards the end of the episode, but I really would like to touch on your gift um, to the profession. And we often recite a popular um, adage, and that is the meaning of life is to find your gift. The work of life is to develop it. The purpose of life is to give it away. What is Dara's gift to our listeners today, and particularly those serving the public in areas affected by conflict, such as wars, humanitarian crisis, poverty, natural disaster, man-made disaster, epidemics and diseases, and the list can go on. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating question. Uh... I think we may have used the word already, Dahlia, but I think uh, being a community pharmacist is a great job. I love it. And I think one of the reasons why I enjoy it so, most, so much is I think I'm really privileged to have people's trust, uh, 
you find out a lot of things about a lot of people when you're a community pharmacist, when they confide in you. And because it is a privilege and you have the opportunity to make a difference to people, I think that probably comes to the fore the most when people are in crisis. So we spoke a little bit earlier about families and caring for people at the end of their lives. And I think probably the next most stressful situation for people is, you know, when they're in chaos or they're in crisis. In my small town, my first memory in uh, the middle of the 1970s of seeing somebody who didn't look like anybody else in our town was uh, there was a family came from Vietnam. And and the fellow ended up being our neighbor because he worked in a bicycle shop across the street. And to me, that was an amazing thing as a, I don't know, say four or five at the time that this was fascinating. But since then, we've had people in my town from Kosovo. We've had people from Syria. And currently, we are looking after people from Ukraine. The sensitivity that you learn then gets very distilled uh, and you have an ability to take that little bit of crisis and that little bit of chaos out of these people's lives by helping them. But I certainly know that through FIP and through the Irish Pharmacy Union and listening to other pharmacists that in those situations, this is very new to communicate with somebody else who is in this crisis. I was able to do a much better job than I would have otherwise been able to do by leaning on the resources from FIP and also from the Irish Pharmacy Union in, in, in all of those scenarios. So where I go back to say is that we have that privilege and we have that ability, and it is hugely satisfying to be able to help people, which is what we do. I add um, our voices to yours, and um, we um, echo these words uh, of support uh, solidarity with all of our colleagues at the front line, wherever they may be. Dara, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. And I would like to conclude with a question that we will pose to all of our guests on the show. You have mentioned conversation multiple times. This is a series that is titled Transforming Conversations. We have been privileged to have you and we have been privileged to learn about what you have been up to at FIP, but also as the esteemed, respected professional that you are in your country. How do you think our conversation today, Dara, may have influenced or in any way touched our listeners? Uh, thank you, Dahlia. You've quite pumped my tires there. I'm yeah, a, a little bit embarrassed now by that. Uh, look, I one of the things that gives me huge energy and is in itself a privilege is I've been lucky enough to tutor or to be an older pharmacist, a mentor pharmacist for I think at last count about 23 pharmacists. And what I would like this conversation, you know what I mean, if it is going to have a resonance with people, I would love this conversation to have a resonance with younger pharmacists who have fantastic career options, really, like really, really good career options. And it is fascinating to see all of those different areas of practice that young pharmacists have the opportunity to work in nowadays in, com in comparison to an I qualified at the end of the last century. Uh, what I would really love is, is that the energy and the enthusiasm that I feel for community pharmacy 25 years later, I would like younger pharmacists to know that being a community pharmacist is a fantastic job you know there's really good days there can be some down days too but that's what i'd like to think and again when we talk about what is our vision what is our purpose i think that it is a very satisfying job and if it is a case that you're kind of doing a little bit of head scratching to say to yourself is this what i want is this my future career I think take that step backwards and have a look to see what is your vision, what is your purpose, what is it that you want to achieve, and to know, I feel, that that can be achieved within community pharmacy. A learning, certainly, that I know from how we responded so well to the pandemic and the crisis was a lot of the emergency legislation that came through in different pharmacies in different jurisdictions to enable an expanded scope of practice for community pharmacists. It's going to give us a fantastic springboard to apply all of those things that are in the vision. And I think the practice of community pharmacy now is on the cusp of an accelerated 
uh, an accelerated ability to do our jobs, which really sounds kind of strange, but I just feel that we're at a generational change. And I think it's, it's, it's a very exciting time because like all scientists, we want to be able to refer to proof to be able to say that we can do this. And I think the proof is there now because we have, and I think it's an exciting time for pharmacy. So maybe we will have another conversation like this in 25 years time, Dahlia, when I'm hopefully maybe then still practicing as a community pharmacist. I hope so too, Dara. You've shared so many um, inspiring um, and purposeful learnings with us today in this conversation. One learning I'm summarizing with is that we all have our ups and downs uh, on daily basis, but it's important to have a conversation about all of this. And today you have allowed us to have a very important conversation. And for this, I am thankful and I'm sure FIP is thankful and all of our listeners are thankful for your time, energy, and for sharing all your thinkings, uh, ideas, and aspirations for the for the profession. Thank you so much, Dara, for joining us on this call. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Dali. Many thanks to our guests. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Transforming Conversations, hosted by FIP, the International Pharmaceutical Federation. Please let us know what you think and tell other people about FIP on social media. Thank you.